Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So on Tuesday, we have several primaries that are coming up. We did a video on the governor's race, the governor's primary in Pennsylvania yesterday. And today I'll be focusing on the Senate race. Now in terms of North Carolina, I could do a video on North Carolina, but at the same time I've kind of already covered that. And it seems as if Ted Budd is going to run away with the nomination. It's going to be epic, but we'll be streaming on Tuesday either way, covering all the results. It's going to be epic. Make sure you're there. It is probably the biggest primary day to date in terms of the 2022 midterms. But Beyond that point, we have to discuss this. We're going to dive in because this race is becoming competitive. There are wild cards that are shaking up this race. And we're going to dive in in a second. But I want to tell you guys about my merch, shop.readygopolitics.com. All these great designs. And they are epic. We have t-shirts, coffee mugs, hoodies, stickers that are like decal quality. You could use them as bumper stickers on your car or you could use them on your laptop. It's pretty epic. We've got everything and more on shop.redigalpolitics.com. The link will be in the pinned comment down below. But this race was already a foregone conclusion, at least so we thought, back in November because Sean Parnell was Trump endorsed. A lot of name recognition from the looks of it was a very strong candidate. And he ended up dropping out of the race and that left the field wide open. Now, a lot of the other candidates that were already in the race failed to really gain any traction. Either they were just boring, uncharismatic establishment, but didn't even like have the backing of the establishment because they were just weak candidates or they were just like seen as internet candidates or afterthoughts. And some of them have dropped out since then too. But that was until you saw several high profile entrants to this race. You saw David McCormick, who was the CEO of Bridgewater Associates. He has basically grifted his way in and out of the public and the private sector his entire career. Open globalist, total neocon. We'll get to the dirt drop in a minute because there's dirt on every single high profile candidate in this race that I think we need to analyze and be objective about. But Dr. Oz, the Dr. Oz, celebrity doctor, had the Dr. Oz show and he joined the race. To many people's surprise, a lot of people didn't know Dr. Oz's politics, and uh, definitely there's been a lot of flip-flopping in his past that needs to be analyzed, but Dr. Oz entered the race as well, and Trump endorsed Dr. Oz over McCormick, which I still believe to be the right move if those were the only two candidates in that race, because McCormick is that bad. And then Kathy Barnett, which was this challenger that was already in the race, she ran for Congress in Pennsylvania's fourth, didn't really have a chance at winning, but you know, she's a veteran, she's been on Fox News, she's been a commentator, and she surged in the polls because she was running to the right of both Oz and McCormick. She was calling out Oz for being a globalist, and she's seen a lot of traction as of recently, and you look at the polls right now, and you're seeing the fact that it's neck and neck. And Barnett's at 21 in RCP. McCormick is at 20.3 and falling. He's not doing well with undecideds. And Dr. Oz, with the highest name recognition in the race, obviously, is just at 23.3% with a Trump endorsement. And the McCormick internal has Barnett basically in a three-way tie. All the other polls have Barnett within a three-way tie. She's got the grassroots energy, which leads me to believe that because a lot of these polls have such a high number of undecideds, this race could go either way. It could go to Dr. Oz because a lot of the undecideds see the fact that he's endorsed by Trump and they're going to support him. Or they could go for Kathy Barnett because she's been gaining a lot of traction recently. She's been saying all the right things and they've been like pulling up this dirt of her. And we'll get to that in a minute because some of it is legitimate, but a lot of it is not, which needs to be analyzed. But beyond that point, the betting odds are right here. Oz is actually at 47. Barnett is at 34. McCormick's at 26. I think McCormick is way too high. You know, there was the one internal poll. He can only lead by one in an internal poll with 26% undecided. Yeah, I don't think that that's really a, a case for McCormick's uh, chances right there, but that's the best they could do. And of course, they're going to have to put out some push poll to get people to rally behind McCormick. But either way, McCormick is a train wreck. And just before we really get into the dirt drop, it's important to analyze the Democrat side as well because that does matter because maybe Democrats could have fielded somebody that would have been able to have a chance at winning this race depending on the Republican candidate because you have Connor Lamb 
And he's a fake moderate, but he does fairly well in the Rust Belt, uh, comparatively speaking to other Democrats. And he was, I believe, waving like an AR-15 on stage back in 2018. And he's changed too since then, because that was for show. He wants to get rid of the filibuster. He'd still be easily beatable, don't get me wrong, but he'd be a lot stronger than John Fetterman, a burly stoner Bernie Sanders. That's basically what he is. The guy's 6'9". Democrats think that since he's a big dude, he's going to win all of these like blue-collar steel workers. And that's just laughable, by the way. Like That notion is just not there. The guy's a literal a Bernie-level like Democratic Socialist of America type. He wants a $15 minimum wage. He supports Medicare for all. Uh, he supports a single-payer system, which, again, that's not very popular, especially in the suburbs. Democrats need to do very well in the suburbs to win. And this guy said all these horrendous things about Trump supporters in the past to the point where he's not going to win over these rural or even just like white working class Republicans that may have you know voted for Obama but now are Republicans because they voted for Trump. And they're going to come out heavily against Biden in 2022. Fetterman's not going to win these people. Democrats are delusional to believe that he would, but it's, it's just laughable. But the guy's horrendous on the issues. He married an illegal immigrant, by the way, talking about the issue of immigration. Like, that was a big issue that helped Trump in Pennsylvania. That's not necessarily going to bode too well for him. Gun control, he's awful. He's awful on all the issues. And it's laughable that people actually think that this guy poses a chance at all in the general. The electa bros are going to seethe and, and cope about the fact that uh, Kathy Barnett is surging because, oh, she's just too grassroots and Fetterman's going to win. It's laughable. No, Fetterman would lose by like five to anybody, but it's laughable that they think Barnett would lose when you literally have the antithesis of a Pennsylvania Republican in David McCormick there. He should be the big red flag. I mean, this guy is an open globalist, free trade globalist. If anybody could lose to Fetterman, it would be him, and I don't think he would. But now it's time to get to the dirt drop. Who do I support? Now, we're going to go over this. Uh, McCormick, again, we'll start with McCormick, David McCormick, the neocon pig, Open globalist, supports globalism, supports free movement of, of people, has said this in the past, supports free movement of goods. He's a free trade enthusiast, opposes the Trump tariffs. He said on record, what is best for China is best for the U.S. That's not going to bode out too well in Pennsylvania, especially when all the steel jobs are going overseas to China, and a lot of voters care about that. He says he wants to increase immigration, says he's going to increase the, he'll quote-unquote say merit base, but he wants to increase the overall number, uh, which again would doom Republicans, because when you import people into this country from these other places, they tend to vote Democrat in very high numbers, and he wants to aid and abet the electoral winter if it will happen. Uh, he's an enthusiastic Jeb Bush supporter. He was in 2016, and he trashed Trump in 2021, uh, basically saying he would have impeached him if he was in the Senate then, and now he wants to cozy up to Trump and act like they're friends because it helps his electoral prospects. He's just a scumbag. He was pro-gay marriage in 2013. He was begging the Supreme Court. He signed an abacus brief to the Supreme Court to uh, support gay marriage even before Hillary Clinton herself supported gay marriage. He was a big BLM shill in 2020. He paid for his employees' gender reassignment surgeries as CEO of Bridgewater Associates. A lot of people have been giving Oz trash for the trans stuff, and I'm giving him trash too. I'm not letting him off the hook, but you could argue McCormick is even worse. And also, he's a carpetbagger. He spends more time in Connecticut than he does in Pennsylvania. So already you have a train wreck. Dr. Oz is not much better, but McCormick is basically going to be a Lisa Murkowski maybe a Susan Collins at best. And Dr. Oz is probably, maybe he'll be a party line vote if Trump gets in there. That's like his ceiling, which isn't really that good, but it is what it is. He promoted transgender children on his show in 2010, didn't condemn it at a time where I feel like most people on the opposition would have. He supported abortion and Roe v. Wade until 2021. He opposed heartbeat bills, but now magically, since he's running for Senate, he's pro-life. He supported red flag laws as late as 2018. I think maybe even 2019, he was supporting red flag laws, which is insane already there. You're talking about the worst form of gun control you possibly can have. He supported them. Was a big BLM shill until 2021. He was, you know, reposting these nonsensical critical race theory cartoons on his Twitter less than a year ago, back in the fall. You could go look at this. They, I believe they're still up. I could be wrong. 
unless he deleted them. But he's a member of the World Economic Forum, and so is McCormick, by the way. Both of them have these ties to these globalist organizations. I think McCormick is more entrenched in them. Also, not on this graph is the fact that Dr. Oz is a Turkish dual citizen as well. He has not relinquished his dual citizenship. He has said he would, but we'll have to see. He supported regulating fracking in 2014. That dirt could hurt him in a general, maybe not against Fetterman because Fetterman is uh, arguably worse on the issue. But he also pushed the Jussie hoax, the Jussie Smollett hoax on his show. He's friends with Jussie Smollett. He was pushing the hoax, the the MAGA country. Well, Pennsylvania can prove that uh, it is MAGA country by not voting for Dr. Oz on Tuesday. He's also a carpetbagger from New Jersey, sort of. He technically lives in and out of Pennsylvania, New Jersey. I assume California as well because of his show. I assume it's done in Hollywood, but that's Oz. And then you have Barnett, who's more of an un known in a wild card. And there's a lot of dirt about Barnett where people will say she used hashtag BLM and hashtag defund the police and said all of these things that were like leftist. But then you click on the article or you click on the video and then she's condemning it. It just proves that she may not have been the most savvy with social media at the time. She's been pro-Trump since 2015. She has been anti-BLM since 2015 for the most part as well. However, there are a couple red flags and I think you could just chalk it up to typical like boomer con talking points. Like I said, she's not perfect, but in 2020, she wanted to build a statue of Frederick Douglass and Obama to like own BLM to show how far we've come. She never supported Obama as a politician or as a president, but like either way, that's still cringeworthy. I'm not going to let her off the hook for it. It was dumb. And she also said some things about the riots that were cringeworthy, like if the, you know people are peaceful, I'll stand with them or whatever. And I know Trump said things like that. Pretty much every Republican politician did, and that doesn't excuse it, like I said. But either way, compared to what Oz and McCormick said about these issues, I think what Barnett has said in the past is like a drop in the bucket of water of the other dirt. And that's the thing we have to analyze. Barnett is a little bit of an unknown, but I don't really think that she would be like a Tim Scott when it comes to the racial issues. She, you know, in her first ad played identity politics, but since then has pretty much dropped that from her campaign or at least dropped it or t- toned it down about 90%, which you love to see. And it shows that she's willing to adapt to build a coalition in Pennsylvania. And she attacks globalism and all these other things. Like compared to Oz and McCormick, she is the best candidate in this race, in my opinion, objectively. I would vote for Barnett if I lived in Pennsylvania because I just don't trust Oz. If Oz wins the primary, is it the end of the world? Not necessarily. Like I would support Oz in a general election. I probably would not enthusiastically support McCormick if he pulls it off, but I don't think he's going to pull it off at all. So I really think it's going to come down to Oz and Barnett. Oz might be the slight favorite right now, but I would prefer Barnett to win. I think it would be a brutal blow to the GOP establishment, a blow to the Electa bros, and honestly just proves that if you want to beat a Trump endorsement, you have to run a more Trumpian campaign. You have to run a campaign from the right. And if you're able to do that, you're going to be able to win easier. But either way, this is a race that's probably at the end of the day going to go Republican by around five points or so. And Barnett is probably my favorite. All three of them would win, in my opinion. Uh, McCormick is a little bit iffy. I think that he'd be the most vulnerable to lose. I think Oz and Barnett about the same. They probably have different coalitions. What to watch on election night. It's going to be interesting if the rural areas start to fill in and they start to fill in in favor of Dr. Oz. That just means, you know, that Dr. Oz probably is likely to win because of Trump's influence in the area. But if they start to fill in for Barnett and uh, Oz and McCormick are underperforming expectations in like the Philly suburbs and Barnett does well there because, again, she's from, I believe, Philly excerpts then maybe it will prove that Barnett is going to be the favorite. But we'll have to see at the end of the day. Uh, I'll be streaming on Tuesday, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Idaho, etc. I'll see you guys there. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below. Comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.